This presentation is being brought to you by CyberArk Labs. A malware dubbed NotPetya emerged as the driving force behind another devastating global incident, one that will likely surpass WannaCry in terms of damage caused. While there are still unknowns in terms of who unleashed the malware and the root motivations, CyberArk Labs has downloaded multiple samples of the malware for analysis. Shekhar Renier with CyberArk Labs will review what the lab's analysis has uncovered thus far about the malware and its progress from infection to global ransomware pandemic. Shekhar, I'll hand things over to you now. Thank you. Thank you very much for introducing me. I'm Shekhar. So as I'm sure most of you heard, a couple of months ago um, in May, the world was hit by a new and fast spreading ransomware attack called WannaCry. This ransomware spread with a speed and scale that ransomware has never achieved before. It was able to do that by using a nation state grade infection vector called Eternal Blue. The results were catastrophic, with some damage estimates reaching up to $4 billion. Two days ago, we witnessed a new attack, a ransomware called NotPetya. NotPetya's name is a reference to the original ransomware that it is based on, called Petya Ransomware. The attackers initiated the attack from Ukraine, where a few government offices and some large enterprises were infected. Some security experts believe that the NotPetya attack was intended to disguise a real, state-sponsored attack and it was meant to divert the world's attention away from it. But for today, let's focus on the facts rather than rumors. So first of all, let's talk about ransomware in general and what it is exactly. Ransomware is a type of malicious software, is a type of malware that denies access to data until a ransom is paid. It usually targets data considered to be sensitive in nature, such as the user's personal files or photos. Ransomware will generally encrypt the data and supply a decryption tool only if the requested ransom has been paid. Ransoms are typically paid in the cryptocurrency Bitcoin due to its anonymity and difficulty to trace. What makes NotPetya special? Let's talk about specifically this ransomware. NotPetya was spread initially by exploiting a vulnerability in a software that is widely known and widely used in Ukrainian government facilities. This ransomware makes use of three different capabilities in one single attack. These three components make NotPetya ransomware unique in the way it spreads and also in the way it encrypts users' files. NotPetya uses Petya as the ransomware component that encrypts the files. This ransomware does that by overwriting the machine's master boot record, which is also known as the MBR. The MBR is the first sector of the hard drive that identifies how and where the operating system is located so it can be booted and start the machine up. NotPetya overwrites the MBR so that the malicious code would be ran on the machine when it's starting instead of the legitimate operating system. When the ransomware boots up, it displays a message that the system is going through a file system repair, when in fact, the user's files are being encrypted by the ransomware. This method of encryption is different than most other ransomware method, since it encrypts the files without interacting with the main operating system using only a malicious bootloader. The second component used in NotPetya was also used in WannaCry. It is the Eternal Blue exploit, a Microsoft SMB protocol exploit that was developed by the NSA and was leaked by a hacker group called the Shadow Brokers a few months ago. 
This capability gives NotPetya a worm-like propagation method that does not involve user interaction in order to spread itself. The third component of NotPetya is a credential extraction tool known as Mimikatz. Mimikatz is an open source tool developed by a French security researcher called Benjamin Delpy that steals credentials that are stored in the local machine. It harvests the credential from locations such as the memory by extracting them raw from the login sessions and from the Windows Vault, which is a so-called secure location in Windows where users can save passwords. These credentials are exactly the type of assets which the CyberArk Endpoint Privilege Manager protects. Using the stolen credentials by the Mimikatz component, NotPetya then laterally moves to other machines available on the local network. Another thing regarding this lateral movement of NotPetya is that an Israeli researcher from CyberReason found a sort of a vaccine to NotPetya when it spreads in this manner. The ransomware searches for a specific file in the Windows directory and if it finds it there, it will not execute a malicious payload, meaning it will not go on and encrypt the user's files. You have to keep in mind that this is only applicable in case of an infection using the stolen credentials and not in the SMB exploit infection. So what do we do regarding ransomware in CyberArk? CyberArk Labs test ransomware on a daily basis against the anti-ransomware policies of the Endpoint Privilege Manager. We basically have a system that searches for new emerging threats in the wild. It then downloads them and tests them against the anti-ransomware policy of the EPM. Over 600,000 ransomware samples tested until today. NotPetya was not different than any other ransomware. It was tested as soon as it appeared in the wild and it was done automatically. When tested in the CyberArk lab, the combination of list privilege principle and the application gray listing proved to be 100% effective in preventing NotPetya from executing. In addition, a new feature of the Endpoint Privilege Manager that is called Application Risk Analysis Service, which is a service that analyzes applications in order to identify malicious files based on machine learning and static analysis. This service will be available in the next release of the EPM. This service has already proven itself in our lab. NotPetya sample was analyzed by it and it was found malicious. So here you can see the report of NotPetya ransomware sample. You can see that the malicious score of this file is 86 uh, in a scale of 100, which means that the file is malicious. Here you can notice that the antivirus positives we have here is only zero since we are only testing our static analysis and machine learning capabilities on this report. In this section, you can see the malicious indicators that this file has. For example, you can see the shutdown ability that restarts the system after the MBR has been infected, as we mentioned earlier. Um, you can also see here the recent compilation date, the embedded executable that it holds, the access to other processes on the system. And finally, you can see that this malware is similar to other known malware types based on our machine learning algorithm. Down here, there are some resources that we extracted from the file itself. <coughs> For instance, you can see here the email address of the attacker that we extracted from the file. Um, this is where you need to send your message if you want to decrypt your files. Um, also, you can see the asset of uh, strings in the file. 
you can see here all of the suspicious strings that we found in the file for example the uh, message that says that the ransomware is quote unquote repairing your system while it encrypts the files uh, the ransom note which says you to send bitcoins and also you can see here the list of file extensions that the file embeds and that he will uh, eventually encrypt so coming back so what can a user do in order to protect himself against NotPetya and against ransomware strains in general? The first thing is to create a backup. A backup can't hurt you. Whether you got infected by an exotic malware or your hard drive just died suddenly, you'll always have another copy of your important data. It is also important to keep this backup offline. The next thing you can do is to follow the least privilege principle. The average user don't really need to run as an administrator in his everyday work on the system. Even though running as an unprivileged user cannot prevent ransomware from accessing the user's files, it can sure prevent it from deleting important assets from the system, like for example shadow copies, which are basically backup versions of your files, and also it can prevent it from deleting restore points from your system. When talking specifically about NotPetya, if the ransomware runs with non-administrative privileges, NotPetya will fail to override the machine's master boot record, or the MBR, and it will not encrypt any of the user's files. The third thing you can apply is application control. Controlling which executables have access to your personal files can contribute to the defensive effort. For example, let's say you put the PowerPoint executable in a whitelist as the only executable that has right access to your presentation files. Then, a ransomware executable won't be in this whitelist for applications that are able to write to presentation files and thus it won't be able to access the files and it won't be able to encrypt them. This point goes along with another one which is to protect your whitelisted applications. Let's say you enable the MS Word executable to access your Word documents. You wouldn't want an attacker injecting code into MS Word and accessing your files from its context. Using its privileges since this will effectively bypass your application control. This is why it is really important to protect your trusted processes. As for not Petya in specific, we can take some measures in order to mitigate its propagation. The first of which is to disable SMB version 1. The eternal blue vulnerability is targeting only version 1 of the SMB protocol, which is a really outdated version and Microsoft is advising to disable it for about a year now. Another option you have here is to simply apply the patch Microsoft release for this called MS17-10. It is available even to deprecated systems such as Windows XP and Windows Server 2003. The last thing is to apply port filtering. SMB is meant to be an internal network protocol so your network shouldn't be open to SMB from the internet. To sum things up, even though there are samples of NotPetya that destroys the MBR and making the machine unbootable, it is still a highly dangerous and effective ransomware. We talked about NotPetya and how it is different than other ransomware as well as we introduced ways to mitigate these sort of attacks. Thank you. Thank you, Shekhet, for a very informative presentation. More information about this malware can be found on the CyberArk website underneath our blog. Thank you.